I'm not started that recording. I'm gonna I'm gonna just start recording from this point. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and just add a completely new screen. Okay, so I just added a new screen. I chose my template, and I am going to what I did up here. The the icons that we have up above. This is for entering text information. The middle icon is for entering any media, which can include video, audio, or pictures. And then the icon over here will link to an outside URL. So with the text icon, you can go ahead and enter in just your plain text. You can enter in multiple choice type questions. You can enter text box questions, file upload questions. With the middle icon here, you can enter in images, you can enter videos, and you can enter those audio components. All right, so clicking here on text. Oh, I clicked too far here. Hold on a minute. We do have a couple of other um, ways that you'll be able to answer questions, input questions, but um, they're still being worked on. So one will be a hot spot and one is going to be a drag and drop where you'll be able to drag um, from a column of words and drop that into the correct box. All right, so here I'm going to go with my standard, what is your favorite color? So you can go ahead and type information in. You can do a copy and paste. When you are copying and pasting, you need to use that control C for copy and control V like Victor for pasting. So this is just like a mini version of Word. You can go ahead and change the font if you'd like. You can change that font size. You can also change the color of the font. Okay, so if I wanted to leave this as just plain text, I can go ahead and click on the green check mark, and then that would save that piece. Next, I'm going to go ahead and paste the same question in, and this time I want this to be a multiple choice question. So again, I'm going to go ahead and make those answer selections, and then I just highlight those answers, and I check on make this an answer. And I'll, I have guides on this, Maria, as well, that if you, I, you should have a copy of, but if you don't, I can get those over to you. All right, so then I can put a point value in, and then I need to go ahead and mark the correct answer with multiple choice. If I want to allow for correct answers, I would check the box here, and then select those that I want to be the correct answer choice. All right, so once you have that in place, again, go ahead and check on that green check mark. Now, you can also add the text box answers, which is what you currently have in place. So here we have our question again. And wherever I place the cursor is wherever the text box will go. And I can just click on Make This a Text Area Answer. All right, so again, I want to put my point value in. If I put the answer in here, okay, again, they have to have the answer exactly the way you put it in for it to be even considered an um, autogradable piece. We were having a lot of issues with that not occurring. <laughs> so what we were advising the instructors to do is to actually just put that into the grading notes here. So that's a decision, you know, that's up to you. If you are going to uh, put the text box in, the answer in the text box here where it says answer, it's important still as an instructor to go in and check those because, like I said, even the putting in additional space in will cause it to be wrong. All right, so then again, we're going to go ahead and click our check mark. Now the third type of question that you can add here is a file upload. So I'm going to say, what is your favorite color? Um, let's say, right, whoops, let's say describe for describe why in 500 words or more in submit to your instructor. 
All right, so now what we're going to do is wherever again, wherever I place my cursor, and then I click on Make This a File Upload, this is where the, the um, students will have to choose their file. And what we don't see here, but what they do is an Upload button. Okay, so then they'll have to upload um, this file to you. And again, we're going to go ahead and put the point value here. Notice there's there's not a place, um, you know, there's not an, a text box answer. You have to put the answers in the grading notes here. Okay, now this is usually for something that's a larger item, like maybe a research paper, or maybe um, a science report. So you can go ahead and actually maybe copy and paste a rubric if you need in here, or you can just be sure to say that you want to cover key points. And all of this here is going to show up in the grade book for the teacher when they're grading. Okay, so let's go ahead, whoops, got to remember to save with a check mark. And in addition to doing the save with the green check mark, you need to be sure that you save with this floppy disk. So I would try to do that periodically. And usually what happens is you forget to do it once, and then you don't forget to do that again. All right, so let's just look at our screen again. I'm going to title this text because we entered some different text type pieces in here. All right, so again, I'm going to go ahead and save that here. Now I'm going to go ahead and start a different screen. And here you can go ahead and this is where you can do that image, audio, or video. And it's all done the same way. So let's just go ahead. I have sample pictures here somewhere. This is all maybe a different way. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Let's put our little koala bear in. Now before I upload or once I upload, I'm going to go ahead and copy the image URL because I want to show you another way that you can put images in. Okay, so once I have that picture uploaded, I'm going to copy that image URL. Right now I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see my image in, but you can also, you can do resizing, but it's not, it's going to take away part of the picture here. So putting the image in this way does take up um, a majority of the screen here. You would do the same thing if you had an audio file or a video file. All right, so let's call this media here. And I'm going to go back to my text screen for a minute. I'm going to open up this text box here. And wherever I had my image, or I just copied my image URL. So wherever I put this cursor, I can go ahead and I can drop that image URL. Here on the, that Appearance tab, I have more control over the sizing of that image. Okay, so once I put the first image in, that second one will automatically adjust proportionately. And then I can click Insert, then OK, and it's much smaller. Okay, so this can be done with maybe snippets of math questions, um, it can be done with, you know, images as you have here, but it can also be embedded into the middle of the text here if we had an image other than our little koala that we wanted to put in. I mean, we can still use him, but we'll make them even smaller. Okay, so this is a way that you have more control over that image that you're putting in. All right, so let's just go ahead and save that there. This next screen that I'm going to add, this will call URL. And when you click on that icon for the URL, you can go ahead and type in, let's still put these schools in here. Type in your URL. You can open in a new window, same window, or show in frame. I advise a new window or show and frame. This will be an interactive site, just as if they were on the site, you know, on a different tab. 
click OK. And then the URL will be within the frame here. All right, so let me go ahead and save this one. Okay, so now we have three different types, three new slides in here. So what I'm going to do, we have this as Lesson 1, Introduction to Grammar Quiz. I'm now, because I'm enrolled in this, I'm going to go over here as a student, and we'll see what this looks like from the student end. We'll do this activity, and then we'll look at it in the grade book, how the, the instructor will see it once it's been uh, submitted and completed. All right, so here I am, student role. I click into my class. Oh, just a minute here. I'm going to go back over as admin. Whenever I put myself in, whenever you put yourself in, you're always in a pending status. Let me just take care of that here. And there I am pending. All right, so let's just get back here as a student and go into that class. All right, so here we are in the Lesson 1 Introduction to Grammar Quiz. So when I click on Begin, here's the first screen that we saw when we were in the edit mode. Here's the second screen. So now, We'll go ahead and do a couple of different variations here. This is telling us the parts of speech, find the nouns in the sentence. So if I were to write police and suspects, this is not going to match, so you'll see what will happen when we're on the, in the grade book. Okay, um, what are the nouns in the sentence below? We'll go ahead and get that correct. They appeared in court on Wednesday. We'll just go ahead and put one of the nouns in here. Identify the pronoun. I'm just going to go ahead and type anything in here. Adjectives. Um, let's just make this not correct here. Okay, so. Alright, so I'll just do a few of them here. Oops. Okay. Moving on here. Alright, here are some of the ones that, that I put in here. So when the students do a file upload, they're going to go ahead and search their computer for their file, then click on Upload, and then they'll move on to the next page. Here's our nice little picture of our koala. And then here is our URL. Okay, so notice for the students, they didn't complete two questions, so they could go back and work on those questions if they like. If they want to submit their activity, they just click on Complete Activity, and it's going to tell them. 90% uh, has been completed. You've answered 18 out of 20 questions. Do you want to continue or do you want to submit? So Continue would allow them to go in and finish working or change any of the answers that they already put in. If we click Submit, it's going to tell you again, do you wish to submit your work? This cannot be undone. Teachers can go ahead and reset the activity, but that will cause all the answers that the student put in to be wiped out, and it will also uh, cause any grades or any comments that the teacher put in to be wiped out as well. All right, so now the student has a PG or a pending grade here. So that means it's up with the teacher and waiting to be graded. Notice now that that button says review. We're going to go back in as the instructor here. 
I'm going to enter into my class. And now, this orange highlight here tells me that I have a submission. It tells me one person has started, one person has completed. And this will take me directly to the area where I'm able to go in and grade that activity. Now, there is a longer way to get there and more components to the gradebook, which I'll show you in a minute. So now you see there's a partial grade here. That's because part of our activity was computer scored and part of it um, like where the file upload was, was not. So when we go in to grade the activity, there's two ways. You can do individually and then you can grade multiple. We're going to take a look at both views so you can see the difference. All right, so here we did set this up. It was set up to be a automatically graded piece with the correct answer up top here. Okay, so the correct answer should have been police, comma, suspects. We wrote police and suspects. Still correct, but it's not exactly as it should have been. So this really, you know, could have a one-point value. So that's why it's important whenever you set up those text box questions to be like that, um, that you still take a look at them. Okay, the teachers can go ahead and write a comment in here. And we're going to look at this on the student side so you can see um, what the student sees after an activity has been graded. So we're moving we move, um, along by using the navigation keys at the bottom to the next question. Okay, so this should have had the correct answers of court and Wednesday, and they didn't, so you could just leave it at zero. Okay, this one is an example of where everything matched up correctly in that text box, so it was automatically graded and given that point of one. This one was not correct, it was marked incorrect, so no points were allocated. Okay, and then here, this, was, this is one of the uh, activities that we skipped, so it doesn't allocate any points at all. This is another one that we had skipped here. Okay, marked wrong, so no points are allocated. All right, so you, you kind of, you know, can see that it is important with those text box answers that you still do need to go in and look at those answers to see if the student did really get them right. They just maybe didn't put them in. Like, for example, um, I did get part of this right here. So you can allocate a partial. I could make that 0.5 if I wanted. Now, when you are done grading, and we'll just stop here at this point for a minute, you'll just click on Gradebook, and that'll take you back out to the Gradebook. And it's going to adjust the score with the points that we put in. Now, we're going to just take a look at this in a, in a different view. Had you had more than one submission here, you could go ahead and do the check mark, and this would just select all the students. Or if you know the exact students that submitted, you could go ahead and just check those off. Okay, then you click on Grade Selected, and this will allow you to grade more than one student at a time. So the view is a little bit different, okay? Um, if had we had other students in the class, you would see those students listed below. You would see your correct answer up here for this text box, and you'd see what the student chose. Okay, and then you could go ahead and fill in your point value based on the possible points, and you can write your uh, comments here. The navigation keys to move through to the next question are on the top the top right, where before we had them on the bottom. This does also have a question list, so it allows you to jump to a particular question. So we left off that question 11 before, so that's why I want to jump to that one now. Okay, and then just to move on, you'll use that key up above. All right, we're, we'll just go ahead and add some points just to boost that grade up a bit. 
Okay, so now again the answer should have been in. We put 10. Um, again, you could add a question here like refer to um, whoops, slide 1. Maybe you want to tell them to go back and refer to a specific section. Okay, so again, we've got the correct answer, what we put, and let's just give a point for that. Just to make that 14 start to get a little bigger. So we'll keep adding some points. But this, so that's the, the general idea, is that you'll, with this in place, you're able to go ahead and um, move through. That, this one here, where they spelled it, they did get a point for that. Oops, we don't need to go ahead and, and change anything there. And then here, what is your favorite color? We This is where we had selected multiple correct answers. And they got that correct, so the points were allocated here. Okay, this is an example where we did put the um, answer in both the text box and we included in it as the grading notes just so you could see what the grading notes would look like when you're in the grade book. And the student did get that incorrect, but we're going to go ahead and allocate some points anyway here. Now here is where we have that download from the student. Okay, so the student had uploaded a file and it appears as a download for you. It's going to open up at the bottom left of your screen. So you'll be able to go ahead and view the activity that your student submitted. And then you'll go back here and allocate the points based on what they submitted. Maybe you want to say great report. All right, so now, oh, I didn't need to do that. Now we just can go back out to the grade book when you're finished. All right, now that grade is boosted up to a 62.9. All right, so now the student at this point does not see the grade. You have to post that grade so that it's visible to the student. So when you click post, it's going to say posting will make it visible. Do you want to proceed? Yes. All right, so now that we have that green check mark, you can see that um, the grade was posted. That's what the green check mark here means. All right, so let's go ahead and um, go back to the curriculum page here for a minute. We don't have any other activities that have been submitted. Let's go to, I, I, want, I want to show you a couple of different things here. If I even click on the completed tab and nobody's completed it, I'll still be able to go here and, you know, for example, this activity does have some questions in it because it's, it allows it to be reset if I needed to and it says that it's not been submitted. If I wanted to go ahead and give Dawn a grade for that of zero, say she didn't do the work, but I still need this to count toward her average, I just click on the column next to her name. Again, that just opens up and it allows me to put a value in there. It's still not posted to the, for the students, so if you want it to be included, you do need to post that grade. All right, so let's just go back here. If I were to, what we have been doing is jumping from the curriculum page, clicking on the completed tab, and jumping into the gradebook. If I were to just click on gradebook, this is where I would be brought to. It's called the overview page. This shows me the overall class screen. It shows me the different period breakdown, if we break them down by, into periods. It shows me all of the other categories that make up this overall grade. All right, so I have assignment, participation, quiz, and test. If I double click on assignment, this is going to open up and show me all of the categories that are listed as, or it'll show me all the other activities that are listed as an assignment. Okay, so I have one uh, writing skills. If I go into the participation piece here, 
this will show me all of the activities that are labeled as participation. Okay, so uh, the same goes, I guess we don't have anything in for the final exam yet, but same for quizzes and your tests. And here's the quiz that we just did. While I'm here, just as how I entered a, um, a zero for that one activity that we didn't uh, turn in, I can boost this grade, I can, I can change it if, um, for example, say they did some extra credit on this piece, I can go ahead and change the grain, click Save. Again, I have that blue circle indicating that I did a manual override. And then the green check mark here it shows that it was posted, so this will automatically reflect on the student side. All right, so let's just jump over as a student so you can see what the student will see. So now I can see the overall grade for my class from here. I have a progress bar, so it tells me how I'm doing in the class. When I go into the class, I can see here that, oh, I've got an 80 on a quiz, but I also have a zero on this participation piece. Okay? If you click on Review, this takes us in where we left off. So let's just go ahead back to that first page. And I will be able to see the scoring. So for this one, I got 1 out of 1 points. And the teacher added a comment. Okay, so this is what the student would see when they log in. Alright, they'll see that for each question. Alright, so um, are there any questions so far on anything that um, you've seen here? Putting in content, how the student submits an activity, you know, what it looks like on your end in the grade book. Okay, I have a question here. Um, um, how would you mark an upload file or grade an uploaded file? Once the file, we'll go back over here for a minute as an instructor. So if I go into my grade book, let's just go back into that piece here. I'm able to open it up. Um, I can't send it back through the grade book. What you would have to do is just save it and then send it to your students through their message center. Okay, so let's just go back into the activity for a minute here. And if it's a Word document, there's ways that you can go ahead and we'll get over to that last page. All right, here's my download. You can go ahead and, I believe it's under here, like if you wanted to make a comment on this particular piece, you can go ahead and make comments here. It depends on, I guess, on the version of Word that you had. But, you, you know, you would go ahead and make your markings like you normally would do. Um, maybe you would just go ahead and actually write in your, your comment here. But then you would have to save it and send it to them through the message center. It's not something that, once you save, goes back up with the students. That was a good question. All right, so let me show you how you would um, do that. Once you've saved it, you could then go into your message center. Just waiting here. And then for sending a standard message to a student, or to a student, you're going to leave it at standard. You could then you select your student's name and then just say here reference or quiz one essay. And then send as an attachment back to the student. Okay? Uh, 
um, I know Maria said they could set up the, the grades another way like um, some of the other uh, schools do, which I think is, um, Maria, I'm going to unmute you, but what I think that they do is they just um, make a slot in the gradebook for that activity, and then they have it submitted in the classroom or submitted through the message box. Maria, is that what you were referring to? Right. So, yes, yes, I was going. If they want to keep everything within the gradebook, they could use that functionality like what the other persons are using right now. Well, a blank shell. Mm -hmm. like you, you are more familiar with what they have done. That is creating a shell. The header that it comes up in the gradebook as the course or the assignments. Right. If, if you did not want that submitted through the gradebook, another thing that you could do Let's just go back here, go back in as um, to the home page here. Let's just get into the class. And, you know, rather than going back and forth um, this way, let me just plug my computer in. Hold on. Okay. Rather than... Um, you know, having an upload or a download file here, the um, students can submit the work to you through the message center. You can basically have a placeholder in the gradebook for it. So, for example, I'm going to create a new activity here. So let me go into the edit mode. All right, and I'm going to create a new activity, and I'm going to just label it um, comprehension. Oops. Comprehension Essay 1. It's going to be an assignment. This is where you're able to uh, put things into those categories that are set up. And then over here, you always need to have this top box checked off. This is just a standard default. But you can also put a firm start date or an end date on this activity. So if I didn't want this to be able to um, be activated until Thursday the 16th, I would select that date. If I wanted them to submit this by, let's say, Friday, I could go ahead and put that date in place. If I wanted to put a um, prerequisite on, for example, I, before they begin this activity, they need to have the other two partic this participation and this quiz checked off, I would go ahead and make those selections here. And then you just click Save. And for... Um, in order for something to show up in the gradebook, it has to have one of those um, question types that, you know, triggers it to go into the gradebook. So, for example, if I'm going to have these students submit this essay to me in class or submit it to me through the message center, I can go ahead and for my screen here, what I'm going to say is, um, did you oops, submit your comprehension essay number one. Okay, and then what you can do is say, make it multiple choice, or make it a fill-in. I would probably do a fill-in. If you make a multiple choice and they click yes, it's going to automatically allocate points. Okay, so I would probably just make it a text area box where they have to say yes or no. And then if um, I put a point value, let's say we're going to give this 100 points. So I would put in here, again, you can put a grading rubric or just leave it blank if you would like. But I would click on the green check mark. I'm going to show you, this is the correct way. You want to have a text box in place. And I'm going to show you, if you do not have one in place, what will happen. All right, so again, we want to use that floppy disk to save our activity. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and go back to the course for a minute. And we're going to create another activity. And we're going to still call this a comp essay, so I know the difference. <laughs> and we'll still leave it as an assignment. 
And let's just go ahead and click Save here. And then let's say that we just want to say, um, comp essay. We don't do anything to trigger that it's a question. Save this here. Now when I go in as a student into this class, we've got our two activities below here. And actually, um, I'm not going to be able to get into this because I put a prerequisite in. Keep going, Don. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on a second here. Let me go back in and remove my prerequisites. Alright, so here are my two activities, and I want to go into this one here. Go up into the pencil here, and remove those prerequisites. And then click Save. Let's go back to the course here. And let's have a look at this one, make sure I didn't put anything in place there. Well, that's fine, and it would tell me I don't have any activities selected, and this is not dependent on anything. Okay, so now let's just go back to the course. Here are my two activities at the bottom here. Let's go in as an, a student. I don't see my comp essay one. Did you submit your comprehension essay? Yes. Now they'll go down and complete their activity. And it's going to tell them they've completed. I'll click OK. Alright, so now I don't know why my other activity is not showing up here. Let me just go back and look at it as an instructor for a minute. Let's delete this one and start over. I'm going to get rid of that one. I don't know why it's not showing up. It should be, but if you ever have anything like that happen, the best thing to do is to just start it over. Okay, so again, we're going to call this comp essay. We'll leave all of this in place here. Save. This one, I'm not going to put a text box. We're just going to click on the check mark and then click Save. All right, so back to the course. Here it does show. Let's just move it up above here. Let's see. This is a way where you can rearrange your activities. I'm not sure if you were familiar with that. Um, if I wanted to move this up to the front, I could do that here. This is one of the places that you're able to rearrange content. Okay, so let's just go back in as a student. And here is that comp essay assignment. We're going to begin that one. And it says, did you complete your essay? Okay, no question involved. When I go to complete this one, it doesn't say for grading. It just says to submit it. Okay, so we're going to submit that. Alright, so now when I go back as an instructor, I go into my class, I'm going to see here 
that although we completed this one, it doesn't require grading, so it's not highlighted. Okay? If I click here on the orange bar, it's going to take me into grade this activity. All right? So I'm going to go ahead into my activity. I'm going to look at the submission that they either gave me in class, or I'm going to look at the submission that came from the message box. I'm going to grade it, mark it up, give it back to the student, and then I'm going to put that in here inside the grade book so that um, the students will be able to see that. All right, so let's just go back out to the grade book here. We can see our 90. Let's go ahead and post it. Okay. All right, so now if I want to look at all of the assignments, I just click in the arrow prior to the assignment box. And this shows me all of the activities that are labeled as assignment. Everything that's labeled as assignment will show up, even if it does not require a grade. So, for example, we see our comp essay here. All right, when I click into it, I click on the activity, Notice there's not anything that says not submitted. There's no way for me to post, nowhere to reset. And, um, you know, this was happening in some of the other schools where they thought they were making a placeholder in the gradebook for it, and it was showing up. But since there wasn't anything to trigger it as a gradable activity, and by triggering it as a gradable, I mean making it um, text box, making it multiple choice, um, there's not a place for you to put a grade. Okay, so... That's why it's important if you are going to just make this as a placeholder in the grade book and not have the bulk of the activity, that you just put something in there that triggers it as a question, such as that question, did you turn in your report? Okay? All right, so I just want to go back into the edit area here for a minute. And I was showing you where you could resequence the activities. But this is also where if there are different grading periods for the um, course, like I don't know for term two if you are just using one grade for, for example, January through June, or maybe you have this broken down from January to March and then March to May. Um, the grading periods are set up by administration. Now to assign something to a grading period, these two that we put in here, what you do is you just click once, and then it will become a green highlight. Then you'll click on Bulk Edit, and then you can go ahead and assign it into a grading period and click Update. If you decide that this should have been in a grading period 1 rather than the 2 that we put it in, you can go ahead and change that as well. Okay, um, let's go back into this quiz here for a minute. And this is the other place where you can resequence. So suppose you're building and then you decided, oh, I really should have had this as a second screen. You can go ahead and move these around. You just have to remember to click on that floppy disk to keep your changes. Still another place that you can rearrange is where I did earlier. We're going into the ass assessment part here where I had moved my uh, content block up. You know, if you decided you needed to rearrange the order of these questions, you just, again, use the um, drop and drag method to move them around. All right, and then again, you'll just click Save to keep your changes. All right, um, the third tab over here is the grade categories. This is where you'll assign the uh, percentages to the categories. If you want to add different categories, you would just click on Show All. You can either zero an existing one out if you don't want to include it, or suppose I wanted to change this, you know, just reallocate some of the points. You could do that, just making sure everything stays equal to 100. And if I wanted to include something else, I just check off the box allocate my percentages, and then I can click Save. All right. Um, one other thing, when we were working here, 
let's just go into this particular activity with the pen. We'll click on the pencil. When I click on the large pencil here, this allows me to change any of those parameters that I initially set up the activity with. So if I needed to change the category for some reason, I could do that here. Um, again, we could always um, check off the prerequisites here. Okay, and this is also in addition to telling you that um, they must complete the select one selected activity. You know, then you can move down to see which one it is. It's also going to tell you that other activities cannot begin until this one's complete. So, for example, a student can't get into Lesson 3 Writing Skills, Lesson 4 Comprehension, or Lesson 5 Revision of Units until they have completed this activity. All right. If you decide, oh, maybe I shouldn't, I don't want the students to see this screen right now, but I worked really hard on it, so I don't want to delete it, what you can do is actually change this to a category um, that's called Lesson Plan or Answer Key. All right, we don't have any of that listed right now. So what you would have to do is just make that an active category on the tab here. So Answer Key and Lesson Plan are not shown to the students at all. Okay, so for example, if I have this, our quiz here that we worked really hard on, um, this Introduction to Grammar quiz, and I decided that I didn't want to show it to this group of students, but I don't really want to delete it from the class. I can go ahead and just make this, it's actually in the category type, uh, make this an answer key. Okay, I can do it to both because I put it in both places here. And then click Save. And this is telling me that since I've already had a student that did this, um, and I'm making it an activity that's not visible, that any of the results that the student has already done will be deleted. So in this case, I, I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> but if, I, if I, I would have chosen a different activity that nobody had worked in, I would not get this message. Okay, so this is basically telling you, and it, it, it's there just to remind you that if somebody has worked in there already, you don't want to move it out of an active category or, or type. Okay. All right, so any questions at all on anything that we've gone over? So Andrew is saying it looks good. Um, Maria, do you have any um, questions? Or Richard, any questions or anything to add? Okay, John. Yes? You may want to look at actual creation. Even though we have done the lesson one, you can look at we actually did it in-house at, at uh, Caribbean High School and not with JFLL. So they may want to understand how to put on content as well in that regard. So could you just do a brief overview of how to add content like in the participation category? Uh, sure, yeah. They can add it. Um, you know, they, yeah, I mean, we can just go over writing and content and just copying and pasting things and because it's all similar to, to what we just went over, but um, yes, we can go over that. Um, Andrew also had a question saying worried about um, smartphone payload or tablets. Um, it depends on, you can access the site from anywhere that you have internet access. But depend upon, dependent upon what's put in, if it requires, um, you know, maybe an app that is not available on that tablet, then, this, you know, the student couldn't use that. So if you're just putting in, um, you know, text, multiple choice type questions, text box 
asks questions, you should be fine. But if you're going to put in maybe a movie or an interactive piece, you know, maybe an interactive game, and whatever they choose to, to use, whether it be a tablet or accessing it on their phone, if they don't have uh, an app to run that, then they will not be able to, to view it on that particular device. So, you know, again, it depends on what they're, they're using. Okay, so let me just go ahead and dock this here. Um, if this was your first class, let me just go ahead and schedule another class off of this for a minute here. You don't have to worry about this part here. I'm going to go ahead and just create a class. This is done um, as an admin, but we'll just go ahead and get this in place here as a brand new class as if you were starting from the beginning. All right. So if this, this is my class, I don't have any um, activities listed in it at all, okay, except for the one screen that you have to have in order to, to roll a class. You always have to have one, one screen initially in place, okay? So um, what we'll do here is your percentages are already in place, but before you do start developing, you want to be sure that you have the categories named that you're going to be using. Okay, so what I would do is go into the edit mode, go to that grade categories tab, and click show, and then just check off the ones that you feel that you'll be using in the class. So participation is usually what we designate all of the actual content, like the learning pages, the, the bulk of the um, of the lesson is found in participation. Alright, so let's go ahead and we'll assign a percentage to that. And then save. Alright, so this, this new activity here, we're just going to go ahead and view it here. It's, it is an assessment. If you wanted to keep this in place here, you could. This looks like it might be a pre-assessment. Um, let's just go back out of this for a minute. But if you wanted to delete it, you could, you, you could remove the screen here by clicking on Remove and then click Save. Okay, or if you did not want to use it at all, you could delete it with the garbage can here. You just, again, need to make sure you click Save. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a new activity. And we're going to go ahead and we'll just call it participation anyway. And usually the activity type and the category match up, but they can be different if you decide that, um, you know, maybe this is a form of collaboration, but you want it to go into participation for grading purposes. Okay, so again, category is what uh, composes the overall grade. All right, again, if we wanted to um, put prerequisites in place, we could, although we've only got the one activity. Um, and then if you wanted to have your start and your end date, you could put that in place. And then click Save. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and select a template for the screens. And then you can go ahead, I don't know, we'll just say slide one. And to add your text in, you can do a couple of different things. What we looked at earlier is that you can just go ahead and write text in. Let me see what, um, looks like it's one of our message, message board posts. If I want to copy and paste from a document, I just use that control C and then control V, like Victor, all right, to copy and paste an item in here. And then I can just go ahead and click save. All right, if I wanted to, um, Let's say I wanted to add um, 
a picture in to be my part of my instruction. Uh, let's see, I do have something here, I think, that I... Let me save this first. All right, if I wanted to add, let's go ahead and just add this image here. All right, here's a little image that I want to put in. So maybe I could add some pictures of uh, maybe graphs or um, just images that are found in um, textbook, textbook pages or that relate to whatever you're referring to. Um, let's see, the, um, any, another type of, um, the, of information that you might put in for, let's see, we've got the regular text, we've got here your image, and um, this is probably the bulk of, um, of what you'd be doing just for adding in your actual um, uh, content. You have to be sure to click on that floppy disk up at the top. All right. So again, open up our slide here. There we go. Um, you can do a copy and paste of text. You can add an image here for instruction. If you have PowerPoints that you want to put in, you'll need to convert that first to a PDF and then the PDF is put in as an image here. Okay. Um, Word documents cannot be uploaded here. They can be accepted by the students as an, as an upload when they send work to you, but you're not able to upload a Word document. That again would have to be converted to um, PDF to be accepted. Okay, so let me see if I have a um, a PDF file here, or let me just make this into a PDF, just, just a minute here. I have a Word document, and I'm going to go ahead and just save it as a PDF. Okay, so it's message board post PDF. So now I'm going to go ahead and save that. Alright, so my Word document's just been converted. So now, what I will do is go ahead, browse my computer, and pass it. click Upload, and then click OK. Now, with any of the documents that you put in as a PDF, when the students do see it, um, they will have an option at the bottom when they hover down at the bottom that will allow them to save the document or to print it out. Okay, so if you have something, um, you know, this could come into play where um, you're going to just have the student print out the activity and then complete it and send it back to you as an upload for you to grade. Um, if that were the case, you would want to make sure that you include a file upload button in another block that allows the students to send the work up. Okay, so maybe we put a PDF in for them and we're going to go ahead now and we're going to say after you have read the MD PDF, please print and complete once complete, please upload to the teacher. All right, so now we're going to give them, we're going to tell them that they read the, the PDF file we've inserted. Once they complete, please upload uh, to the teacher using the file upload below. Okay.
So now they have their PDF in place and they're able to go ahead and upload it to you once they've completed it. All right, so that, that's just a couple of different ways that you can get your main contact in, or content into the platform. So participation, as I mentioned, is mostly for um, the wording or the, you know, where you'll find your lesson material. And then, of course, assignments are just the, the, usually the question uh, type pieces. And then you usually have tests and quizzes. Um, you may want to title something just a writing piece. Maybe you'll have a project that you would like the students to hand in. Those are just some of the different um, category types or assignment types that we have that are available for you to use. All right. Um, any other questions or Maria, anything else you'd like me to review? Okay. All right. And um, Richard and Andrew, do you have any questions at all? Okay. Okay. All right, so I will um, get you a copy of uh, this recording from today. I'll stop.